Hey everybody, I went to the library book sale yesterday and it was 25 cent day. And I got a whole bunch of books and I thought maybe somebody would be interested in what I got. So, I'm going to go through it. First, I got Life of Pi by Yann Martel. Let me tell you. <coughs> Whenever there's a pie around, it has a very short life around me. Uh, Eat, Pray, Love uh, by Elizabeth Gilbert. Now, the more I think about it, I think I've got this book already. I just haven't read it. Souls Raised from the Dead by Doris Betts. Since this one's not easily, um, you, you can't just tell by the name of the thing what it is. I'm going to read like a, like maybe the first paragraph of the, of the summary. Mary Grace Thompson is 13, poised on the delicate cusp between childhood and becoming a woman. She lives with her divorced father, Frank, a North Carolina state trooper. Her mother ran away with the local tax collector and the taxes. Mary Grace is just beginning to try her wings, wrangling her way into writing lessons, nudging her father towards a relationship with her beautiful writing instructor, dreaming of boys. Every day, Frank brings calm to other people's catastrophes, but suddenly catastrophe strikes his own life. Mary Grace is diagnosed with an incurable kidney disease. Our Armed with courage, humor, and a shaky faith in God, Frank, the family, and their friends face the loss of this beloved child. How they deal with Mary Grace's death in their own lives is told in a superb, compassionate, and unsentimental novel that is both tough and tender, powerful and gentle, as heartbreaking and as funny as life itself. It sounds good. Lost in the Snow by Velvet Tucker. It is a a yaoi boys love comic. I just like reading graphic novels, okay? Don't judge me. When politics needs religion, the place of religious arguments in the public square by Brendan Sweetman. It sounded interesting. Don't judge me. And I got three of this series of The Girls of Lighthouse Lane, which has Thomas Kincaid's name on it. Um, I thought, oh, it might be an interesting short read. Why not? That's also a Don't Judge Me thing. Tea with Jane Austen. I, I, I love Jane Austen. I've read almost every one of her books except for... Uh, Mansfield Park. I need to read that one before I quote. But anyway, Tea with Jane Austen by Kim Wilson. Forward by Tom Carpenter, Jane Austen's house trustee. That's another that Lighthouse series. The Woman Warrior. Memoirs of a Girlhood Among Ghosts by Maxine Hong Kinston. Unbelievable, My Front Row Seat to the Craziest Campaign in American History by Katie Turr. I was surprised I got any um, books on Trump now, since usually around this time of, the, um, time of the sale, when things get down to this price, they, they're usually about like two or three administrations back. The Foreigner by Meg Castaldo. Alex Orlando is a foreigner in New York, a California foreigner, sitting for her uncle Carmi while he vacations in Puerto Rico. <clears throat> she quickly becomes entwined with her attractive Swedish neighbor Christian 
but something isn't quite right about him. For instance, where does he get all that cash? Her oldest friend, Kyle, has turned into a stalker, and a much-anticipated visit from Jan, her, her Euro European boyfriend, probably Jan, quickly turns into a nightmare. Sounded good, so I got it. Who thought this was a good idea? By former White House Deputy Chief of Staff Alyssa Mon Mascara Monaco. I thought that might be a good, good book. I got this because it was a graphic novel. And it was bad. I figured it would be. But anyway. Gear School. Man, that was a bad plot. Bad everything. Uh, Bernie Sanders. Our Revolution. I thought, well, I ought to read this. Maybe I'll like him a little better if I read it. Probably not. I don't know why I even buy Glenn Beck books. Because he writes boring as hell. But the one about gun control, is, it sounded kind of interesting. I I read Dana Luce's Hands Off My Gun because it was at Dollar Tree once, and I thought that was a pretty good book. I didn't agree with much of what she said, but I thought it was a good book. Dreaming in Cuban by Christina Garcia. Let's see. We're going to find. Let's see. Poignant and perceptive. It tells a family divided politically and geographically by the Cuban Revolution and of the generational fissures that open on each side. In Cuba, between a grandmother who is a fervent Castro supporter and a daughter who retreats into an Afro Cuban Santeria cult. In America, between another daughter and who mocks her obsession, the realism is it squits it. Sounds interesting. I just had my ninth blog anniversary uh, yesterday, and so the course a book that's called Little Blog on the Prairie. Um, I, I just had to pick it up. Genevieve Welch has a nice, normal, regular summer planned. That is until her mom signs up for the family for Camp Frontier, a themed vacation that promises its guests the thrill of living like 1890s pioneers. Even though they're forced to surrender all their modern possessions, Jen manages to secretly keep in touch with her friends back home, regaling them with all the horrible day-to-day -day details of life on this little hell on the prairie. It should be interesting. Let's see. And I got this one um, because I read Ellen Foster and really liked it, so I thought I'd give this one a whirl. An unforgettable tale of unconditional love and of a southern family's desperate search for normalcy in the midst of madness. It is the story of Maggie, the Barnes woman with all the problems, and Hattie, a child struggling to find a place for herself in her damaged mother's heart. The Dying of the Light by Michael Dignan One of England's most acclaimed younger mystery writers, the creator of Detective Aurelio Zen, gives us a brilliant and haunting variation on the classic drawing room murder novel. The setting is even tight lodge, where the guests have gathered for tea. Colonel Welby is reading by the fire. Mrs. Hiram Hargreave III is whiling away her time at patience. 
and Miss Rosemary Travis and her friend Dorothy are wondering which of their housemates will be the next to die. I'm a bit of an Anglophile, so... I got little altars everywhere because uh, 50 years ago I read the, uh, uh, the Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood, so I got that one. I got these for this kid that I know. Um, He's actually like about 19, but he has the mentality of a 10 year old and he'll love these, so. Who am I kidding though? I have a, a mentality of a 10 year old. <sighs> this one might be a little dated, but I thought I'd get it. Tears of a Clown, Glenn Beck and the Teabagging of America by Dana Milbank. I like graphic novels, so sue me. Uh, Queen Bee by China Clugston. Even bad graphic novels I like reading. So, Girls... Girls, Nearly 16, Absolute Torture by Sue Lim. Just when things were going so well, Jess had the perfect summer planned. Jess and Fred lounging in the park, gazing into each other's eyes and engaging in witty repartee. It was going to be so romantic, and then her maddening mom stepped in. She suddenly announced a two-week road trip to Cornwall to visit Jess's dad, something Jess might have enjoyed, actually, were it not for the mon monstrously bad timing. Anywho, I, I didn't like reading teenage books when I was a teenager, but now that I'm older, I kind of like some of them. I'm just weird. I liked, I either read children's books or I read uh, adult books. I was, I was a weird kid. David Mamet, Mamet, The Secret Knowledge on the Dismantling of American Culture. The struggle of the left to rationalize his positions is an intolerable Sisyphean burden. I speak as a reformed liberal. Oh, I bet this is going to be so stuck up and bloviating, but I'll read it. Why not? This is the next book in the Yaya Sisters, Yaya and Bloom. The Sarah Summer by Mary Downing Han. A Dog's Purpose. Basically, I got it because it was it's popular. I'm surprised nobody had bought it beforehand. I guess everybody wanted to read it. I'd read it, sort of like Omarosa's book, and there was also several copies of Fire and Fury, but uh, they, uh, I was surprised they hadn't sold since they'd only come out a few months before, but anyway, uh, now this will make Glenn Beck cry, The Age of Fallibility, Consequences uh, of the War on Terror by George Soros. See, I threw a few of them up here too. Murderers and Other Friends, Another Part of Life by John Mortimer. This is like his autobiography. Winky by Clifford Chase. 
The Clifford Shapes achingly funny and surprisingly moving debut novel, a mild mannered teddy bear wills himself to life and winds up on the wrong side of America's war on terror. Um, Missing Pieces by James Pendleton, and it's about a a, a, a World War Two era uh, child growing up. I thought it might be interesting. It's lo a local interest type of thing. Sex in the City by Candace Bushnell. I just got it because it was there. I've never actually even seen the show. I ought to sometime since everybody says it's wonderful. A Thousand Days in Venice by Marlena de Blasi. Um, this is a actual, it's a true story of, of a couple who meet in Venice. Uh, Silk by Alessandro Barrico. This startling, sensual, hypnotically compelling novel tells a story of adventure, sexual enthrallment, and love so powerful that it unhinges a man's life. The year is 1861. Hervé Jean is a French merchant of silkworms who comes to the known world for their gem-like eggs. Then circumstances compel him to travel farther beyond the edge of the known to a country that is legendary for the quality of its silk and its implacable hostility to foreigners, Japan. There in the court of an enigmatic nobleman, John Cor meets a woman. They do not touch, they do not even speak, and he cannot read the note she sends him until he has returned to his own country. But in the moment he does, John Cor is possessed. The same spell will envelop anyone who reads silk, a work that has the Impression of a fable, the evocative detail of the greatest historical fiction, and the devastating erotic force of a dream. That's the type of stuff I like to read. Uh, crap like that. In fiction. The Lover by Marguerite Dura. An international bestseller with more than one million copies in print and a winner of France's Grand Prix Concord, the lover has been acclaimed by all critics all over the world. By critics all over the world since its first publication in 1984, set in pre-war Indochina of Margaret Indochina of Marguerite Duras. Um, childhood. This is a haunting tale of a tumultuous affair between an adolescent French girl and her Chinese lover. In its very yet luminous prose, Dura evokes life on the margins of Saigon and in the waiting days of France's colonial empire and its representation in the passionate relationship between two unforgettable outcasts. Let's see. My Pet Virus, the true story of a rebel without a cure. It's about this guy who has HIV. I used to love reading these old children's books, and this is a reprint. The Scholarship Girl at Cambridge, Cambridge by Cambridge by Josephine Elder. The Far-Flung Adventures of Corby Flood by Paul Stewart and Chris Riddell. A Drowned Maiden's Hair by Laura Amy Schlitz, a melodrama. On the morning of the best day of her life, Maud Flynn was locked in the outhouse singing the Battle Hymn of the Republic. That is the day that Maud, plain, clever, and bad girl of, of the Barbary Asylum for Female Orphans, is adopted into a real family, surprising even Maud herself. The elderly Hawthorne sisters, led by the charismatic Hyacinth, think that Maud Flynn is absolutely perfect, and Maud follows them eagerly into a brand new life, expecting to be pampered and cherished beyond her wildest dreams. 
Once she settles in with Heisa, Judith, and Victoria to live out an orphan's fantasy, however, Maud learns that perfection has more to do with the secret role she can play in the high stakes and eerie family business than her potential as a beloved family member. Not one to give up easily, Maud persists in playing her role in the hopes of someday being rewarded with genuine affection. But the burden of keeping secrets and perpetuating lies grows now even for Maud, and she must ultimately decide just how much she is willing to endure for the sake of being loved. Been there, done that sort of thing. Dissipation by Tang Ying Dissipation is the story of Su Xiao Hui, a young woman desperate to create a better life for herself. Leaving behind her friends and family in Shanghai, she travels to Malaysia where her wealthy aunt and seemingly ideal husband offer her a chance to fulfill her dreams. But when her mother is taken ill ten years later, Zhao He finally returns home. She finds herself in a bewildering city infused with the images of a life she thought she had left behind. When loneliness leads her back to her former lover, her tenuous relationships with those around her are severely tested. Lizard by Banana Yoshimoto Triumph at Kitty Hawk The Wright Brothers and, and Powered Flight by Thomas C. Paramore Another one of those lighthouse books. Enrique's Journey. The story of a boy's dangerous odyssey to reunite with his mother. This one's pretty relevant to today. <laughs> An Inconvenient Truth by Al Gore. Ooh, illustrated edition. The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stig Larson. Because everybody's read it but me. Jeff Flake, Conscience of a Conservative, a rejection of destructive politics and a return to principle. A nice hardback copy of Return of the Native. I read Tess of the Bills years ago and really liked it, so I'm going to have to have to read that. Let's see what else we got here. Liberty and Tyranny by Mark R. Levine. A conservative manifesto. So I decided I'd read it. What the hell? This one's a local interest type of book. Uh, One Man's Dream. Champion McDowell Davis and Cornelia Nixon Davis Incorporated a History. Al Franken, Pervert of the Senate by Al Franken. I always wanted to read this uh, before his great downfall. This one's a little dated too, but I decided I'd get a copy. Dude, Where's My Country? By Michael Moore. I was stoked to get this one too, even though Steve Bannon's long since been kicked out. Um, Devil's Bargain. Steve Bannon, Donald Trump, and the Storming of the Presidency. Orange Man, bad. Shattered. Inside Hillary Clinton's doomed campaign. By Jonathan Allen and Amy Parnes. 
I read their other book, HRC, like a while back, a couple years ago. I can't remember much about it. It was about Hillary Clinton. I read so many books about Hillary Clinton. They're starting starting to run together. I read books by Hillary Clinton. And they're starting to run together. History Upside Down, The Roots of Palestinian Fascism and the Myth of Israeli Aggression. Uh, I doubt it's that much of a myth, but I thought I'd read it. Conservatives Without Conscience, John uh, W. Dean. The Silencing, How the Left is Killing Free Speech by Kirsten Powers. Thought that would be interesting. Sometimes people on my side of the, of the spectrum do take things way, 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 way too far. How the Republicans Stole Christmas. The Republican Party's Declared Monopoly on Religion and What Democrats Can Do to Take It Back by Bill Press. Dickens of London by Wolf Mankiewicz. I I really love um some of Charles Dickens stuff. Um, A Tale of Two Cities was such a good book. One of those books you just never forget, you know. Home, The Blueprint of Our Lives, edited by former Senator John Edwards and current douchebag. Anyway, I think that's it. Believe it or not, I'm done. So thank you for watching. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. Oh, and this book, um, Loose Cannons. 101 Myths, Mishaps, and Misadventures of Military History by Graham Donald.